In many diagnostic scenarios, clinicians must determine if the patient is fluid responsive. The key issue is whether stroke volume will increase with a fluid bolus. Why is this important? Because approximately only 50% of ICU patients are fluid responsive. For the other 50%, increased fluid is associated with increased morbidity and or mortality. With the Cheetah Nicom, you can monitor hemodynamic parameters non-invasively. Since the fluid challenge can be achieved with a simple passive leg raise, care can be initiated and driven by the nurse. The patented bioreactance technology of the Cheetah Nicom lets you assess flow and determine fluid responsiveness. The Cheetah Nicom provides continuous, accurate, non-invasive hemodynamic monitoring and empowers fluid management in virtually any clinical setting. It utilizes bioreactants, a technology that was developed by Cheetah medical scientists over years of research and development. This was then followed by extensive testing and validation. The basis behind the Cheetah Nicom is the use of time delay or phase shifts, which occur when an alternating electrical current is passed through the thorax. The Cheetah Nicom has eight sensors on four sensor pads. Four outer sensors emit a low-level electrical current, and four inner sensors detect the information and send it back to the monitor. As the heart expands and contracts, a time delay or phase shift is created in the current by blood flow. The monitor then uses this phase shift as a baseline for measurement. To determine fluid responsiveness or volume status, a fluid bolus is delivered. If the heart can receive more fluid, we'll see greater outflow and a longer time delay equivalent to the increase in stroke volume. If the stroke volume increase is greater than 10%, then the patient is determined to be fluid responsive. This is also represented on the Cheetah Nicom monitor by the estimated location of the indicator on the Starling curve. Its location will appear on the steep ascending portion. If it's less than 10%, the patient is considered not to be fluid responsive. The indicator will be approximately close to or on the top part of the Starling curve. Although the technology is highly sophisticated, the Cheetah Nicom is easy to use. Additionally, its 100% non-invasive nature allows for hospital-wide implementation in multiple sites of care. As with any new device, it's a good idea to familiarize yourself with its functions and menu options. The following in-service will guide you through the process of determining fluid status in a clinical setting. The three components of the Cheetah Nicom system are the monitor, sensor, and patient connection cable. This is the sensor package. Inside, you will find two sets of sensors, an instruction card, and an emery board to clean the skin. A single cable connects the left and right sensors to an input at the rear of the monitor. Begin by placing the sensors on the patient. This allows the sensors to start acclimating to the patient as body heat interacts with the gel. The sensors are clearly marked to indicate their correct location on the patient's body. Simply match the placement of the sensor on the patient to the quadrant on the sensor itself, in this case, the right upper quadrant. Prepare the skin with the emery board included in the sensor packet. Peel off the backing and you'll see the two sensors. Make sure they are securely attached to the skin. Ideally, the sensors should straddle the trapezius. Now apply the right lower sensor as indicated on the sensor pack. The right lower sensor goes below the heart 
at the level of the umbilicus on the patient's flanks and to the side. Repeat the same process for the left side. When all four sensors are correctly positioned, they will box in or bracket the patient's heart. Connect the cables, matching white to the black and the red hub to the red. Navigating through the Cheetah NICOM functions is fairly straightforward. Turn the monitor on by pressing and holding the power button until it beeps. This is the opening screen. The first interactive screen shows four options, existing patient, new patient, settings, and shutdown. Selecting existing patient allows you to add a new hemodynamic session to an existing patient. Selecting new patient allows you to enter a patient who does not currently exist in the monitor. Selecting Settings allows you to change specific items, such as units of measurement. Press Shut Down in order to turn off the Cheetah NICOM monitor. Please note that you will have to return to the main menu and select this option to turn the monitor off, similar to shutting down a computer. Let's begin by discussing the Settings option. First, select Settings. You then have the option of entering patient information, such as height and weight, in either metric or U.S. units. For example, to enter the height in U.S. units, touch Height Units and select USA. Now you'll be asked the patient's height in inches instead of centimeters when entering their information. To input information about a new patient, select New Patient and you'll be prompted for the required information. The first screen is Patient ID. Enter the patient's medical record number or other unique identifier used at your facility. Pressing Next takes you to Patient Age. Enter the age. Press Next. Note that the system asks for the patient's weight in pounds because earlier you had selected U.S. units. Enter the weight. Press Next. Then enter the patient's height in inches. Press Next. And enter the patient's gender. Once the patient's gender has been entered, pressing Finish brings up the Review screen. At this point, you can confirm the accuracy of the information you've entered and correct any errors. Once you've ensured that everything is correct, select the Run key. This brings up the Calibration screen. Before continuing, make sure that the lead wires are placed correctly and that the wires have been connected to the monitoring cable. Confirm by selecting OK to start the calibration. This is the Run screen. You'll then see two channels of EKG and the Cheetah NICOM's signal. The signals should appear stable without a lot of noise. After about 90 seconds, the system will calibrate and the numbers will appear. Note that even though a value appears, the red bar indicates that calibration is still in progress. When the red bar disappears, the system has successfully performed the calibration and there is no need to strictly control patient movement. To enter blood pressure manually, select the Menu key, select Manual Data Entry, and enter Map. The Map dialog box will prompt you to enter a value for mean arterial pressure. Press OK. The system will calculate resistance and display it on screen. To calculate the oxygen delivery index value, you can also enter the hemoglobin and oxygen saturation values. 
be sure to enter the hemoglobin first. If you apply the blood pressure cuff that comes with the Cheetah Nikom, it will automatically record the patient's blood pressure and measure the resistance and resistance index parameters. The interval for the measurements can be selected from the NIBP soft key in the menu section. When choosing this menu option, you will see different cycle time options. To see all the hemodynamic parameters, use the down arrow to navigate to the dashboard screen. This is the dashboard screen that shows the complete hemodynamic profile. Both absolute and indexed values are displayed for flow parameters. The same for stroke volume and the stroke volume index. Also included in this screen is heart rate as well as some additional parameters. Pressing the down arrow again brings up the numerical screen. This displays values that are recorded and stored automatically at either 30 second or 60 second intervals. Pressing the down arrow again brings up the trend screen. Continuing to push the down arrow will cycle you back through all the screens. Accessing individual screens can also be accomplished by pressing the menu button and selecting the desired screen. The fluid challenge which is required to test if the patient is fluid responsive is accomplished with a passive leg raise or actual fluid bolus. Select the method under the Protocols menu option. The protocols are located in the bottom menu under Protocols. For this example, we are going to do a passive leg raise test. Go to the menu, select Protocols, and select Passive Leg Raise Test. To establish a baseline, press No. To start from the challenge stage, press Yes. Confirm that the patient is lying in a semi-recumbent position. Press Next. A countdown timer appears in the upper right-hand corner, indicating the start of three minutes of stroke volume index measurements. The change in stroke volume index is the key measurement used by the Cheetah Nikom to determine if the patient is fluid responsive. After the three minutes have elapsed, a pop-up screen will instruct you to accommodate the patient to a supine position and elevate the legs. When the patient is properly positioned in the supine position with legs elevated, press Next. You will notice that the three-minute countdown has begun again. Note the decrease in stroke volume index in response to the leg raise. At the conclusion of the test, the system draws an approximated starling curve, indicating the location of the patient in terms of their fluid responsiveness. A change in stroke volume index of less than 10% may indicate that the patient is not fluid responsive. However, an increase of greater than 10% in SVI may mean the patient is fluid responsive. Note where this patient is located on the Starling curve. A position toward the bottom indicates that giving more fluid may move the patient further up the curve. On the contrary, if the patient is toward the top of the curve, adding fluid may have adverse effects, such as overloading the heart. As you can see here, stroke volume index decreased 15.8% from an average of 64 to 53, indicating that the patient may not be fluid responsive. Press OK to store the passive leg raise test in the patient data.
To turn the machine off, the sequence is Menu, Exit, Main Menu. Confirm you want to stop the test. This returns you to the opening screen. Select Shut Down. Confirm by answering Yes, and the machine will shut down. Thank you for watching this video guide of the Cheetah Nikon, a technology designed to help you meet the complex patient assessment challenges you face every day. Specifically, the Cheetah Nikon can help you assess a patient's hemodynamic and fluid status. Unlike other technologies, the Cheetah Nikon is non-invasive and stress-free for the patient. It is fast, easy to use, accurate and precise. And it can be deployed by nurses on their own initiative without physician supervision. The fluid challenge is achieved very simply by means of a passive leg raise maneuver or fluid bolus performed by the nurse. Easy on the patient and easy to use. The Cheetah Nikon provides a conclusive answer to the key question is my patient fluid responsive? Enhancing your ability to make informed, potentially life-saving decisions in high-stress patient scenarios.